Hello and welcome to this screencast where we're going to learn how to use MATLAB in conjunction with matrices and linear systems to do some interesting things. So this is, screencast is going to be broken into two parts. In the first part, we're going to be here in MATLAB and just learning how to enter in matrices and vectors and do things arithmetic-wise with matrices and vectors. So first of all, how do we enter a matrix in MATLAB? It's very similar to entering a matrix or to entering a vector. Entering a vector, let's call it A, we're going to start with a square bracket, and let's suppose we're going to enter in a 2 by 2 matrix, uh, with the first row being 1, 3. So we're going to type 1, 3, and when I want to break the row, in the row, and move on to the next row, I use a semicolon. Usually a semicolon, when used at the end of a line in MATLAB, tells you to suppress the output, but if it's in between two square brackets, it tells you to break to a new row, thereby creating a matrix. So let's let the second row be 2, negative 1. We close the square bracket and hit enter, and that creates this matrix here. Uh, we already know how to enter in vectors, and so this is just like entering in matrices, except we only have one row or one column. Let's let V equal the matrix, or the vector, I should say, 1, 2, 3. That creates a row vector. Or I can say, if I want to create a column vector, I would type 1, semicolon, 2, semicolon, 3. And that would break the row where the semicolons happen. So that's how we enter in matrices and vectors. Uh, performing arithmetic on matrices and vectors is very simple. I'm going to create another 3 by 1 column vector here. Let's say uh, 0, 8, 7, and that's W. If I want to create a scalar multiple of W, let's say 3 times W, I just simply type 3 asterisk W, and that creates a scalar multiple multiplying 3 times all the entries in W. If I wanted to form a linear combination of two vectors, adding them together, multiplying by scalars, it's exactly the way you think it should be. Let's suppose I want to form a linear combination of V and W by taking 2 times V minus 5 times W. That's exactly how I would type it in, and that forms a linear combination. Now finally, let's see how we can multiply a matrix to a vector. One of the things we learned in the earlier screencast was in order to take a matrix times a vector, I have to have the same number of entries in my vector as I have columns in my matrix. So I'm going to create another matrix I'll call B. I'd like this to be a 2 by 3 matrix. So let's enter in, say, 1, 3, 5 as the first row, and 2, 0, negative 4 as the second row. So it has, it's 2 by 3, 2 rows, 3 columns. and <clears throat> Since this is 2 by 3, I could multiply it to my vector v that I had before. And so if I want to multiply b times v, I would just type b times v, like so. Not with a dot, uh, but with a straight asterisk, and that would uh, create this vector here. And remember, that is what I get when I take the, the con form a linear combination of the columns of b, 1, 2, 3, 0, 5, negative 4, using the weights uh, using the entries of V as weights. So this is 1, 2, plus 2 times 3, 0, plus 3 times 5, negative 4. So in MATLAB, it's very easy, of course, to enter in matrices, enter in vectors, and do all kinds of arithmetic with them. And this is helpful for us because now we're going to go over and see how MATLAB can be used to set up and solve linear systems using these kinds of ideas. So let's begin with a very simple system like this one that's in two equations and two unknowns. And we found out in a previous screencast that this system can, and really any linear system, can be represented in a matrix vector format like the following. Here we have the 2 by 2 matrix on the left there representing the coefficients. X there in the boldface is different than the X you see as a variable in the top. X's boldface is a vector, and it contains the variables little x and y and 814 is a vector that holds the right-hand sides of the equations over there. Now what I want to do here is solve for x. We haven't done this yet. What we have done is checked that certain things are or are not solutions to this system, but we've yet to actually find a solution on our own. And so that's what we're going to use MATLAB to do. We're going to solve this equation down here for vector x, and there's a couple of ways to do that in MATLAB. Let's go over there now and see how it works. So to solve that linear system or find solutions to it, we need to set up a couple of things. First, let's define A to be the coefficient matrix we saw, and that was 3, negative 2 in the first row, and 1, 5 in the second row. And let's let B equal the uh, right-hand side vector that was 8, 14, that column vector. So there are two commands in MATLAB to solve linear systems. Actually, there are more than two, but two of them are simplest to use. One is called linsolve, L-I-N-S-O-L-V-E, linsolve. And all I have to feed uh, MATLAB in order to solve the system is, first of all, the coefficient matrix, A, and then the right-hand side vector, B. 
and then hit enter, and it gives me the solution for two. So x is equal to four, y is equal to two, and that's the boldface x vector that we were looking for. We already knew that that was a solution. Uh, in fact, if I take the, the four and the two and plug them back into my formulas, I will get 814. And an easy, easier way to check that this is a solution is let's call x equal to my answer. And if I take a times x, that will give me 814. So taking the coefficient matrix times the answer vector that I have here is tantamount to plugging in the values of the unknowns into the system. So this exact same thing is just done in a matrix multiplication fashion. Now there's another command I can use too. It's not actually a command, it's a symbol, and that is the backslash symbol. If I type a for the coefficient matrix and then the backslash command that goes uh, from upper left to lower right, B, it looks like division, but it's backslash, and hit enter. It does the exact same thing. So there are two commands in MATLAB that solve linear systems, both linsolve and the backslash operator. Both involve knowing the coefficient matrix and the right-hand side vector, and both produce the values of x that you need to solve the system. Let's go back and look at a little more complicated system and see how it works in MATLAB as well. So now let's look at this system. It has three variables and two unknowns. We can represent it in a matrix format like this, again with the coefficient matrix, which is now two by three on the left and the right-hand side vector you see there. Again, we want to solve for the vector x there in boldface. Now in this case, x is actually a three by one vector because there are three columns in my coefficient matrix. And the x consists of the numbers x1, x2, and x3. So when I solve for that vector x, I'm really solving for three things at the same time. Let's go over to MATLAB and see how that works. So to solve this system, I first again need to define the coefficient matrix, which is one, negative one, one, and then the second row is two, three, negative two and to find the right-hand side vector 10, 0, that column vector. So I'm going to use the linsolve command, not linspace, but linsolve. Uh, you're going to this, and it tells me 6, negative 4, 0 is a solution. That's uh, x1 equals 6, x2 equals negative 4, x3 equals 0. And we actually saw and checked in an earlier screencast that that was the case. I use the backslash operator like so, gives me the same information. Now, what's interesting here is that what we also saw in a previous screencast was that this is one solution, but there are actually infinitely many of them. For example, 505 five was also an, was an answer or a solution to the system. So the thing about linsolve and the backslash operator is that if you have infinitely many solutions to your system, it will only give you one of them. And uh, that may or may not be good for you. It will give you one solution, but it won't give you all of them. Just something to watch out for. Let's go back and take a look at one more example of a linear system where uh, something gets even more interesting in this vein. So let's take a look at one last linear system here. This one that has two equations and three unknowns, a little bit different than one we had seen before. In matrix form, it would look like this. There again, you see the coefficient matrix on the left, the uh, solution vector on the right, and the x this time is going to be a two by one vector because there are two columns in the coefficient matrix. And so x is gonna hold the two variables, x1 and x2. Let's go over to MATLAB and see how the solution of this pans out. For all of this system, we're gonna again set up the coefficient matrix. This would have one, negative one, 1, 2, and 1, 3 in its rows and columns, and the right-hand side vector is 2, 0, 2. Now, if I run lin solve a comma b, uh, it's going to give me this for my answer, and just to check if I use the backslash operator, same thing. But uh, something interesting has taken place, although we might not see it. Uh, this uh, solution here, x1 equals 1.5385 and x2 equals negative 0.1538, is not actually a solution to the system. Uh, you can check that by looking at, say, the first line of the system, which said that x1 minus x2 had to equal 2. Now, it's pretty clear that this number minus the second number is not equal to 2. In fact, the system that we saw has no solutions at all, and you can check that by graphing, for example, uh, graphing the three lines that are created in the system. You'll see that they do not have a common uh, intersection point for all three of them. So that system is inconsistent, has no solutions at all. If you give MATLAB an inconsistent system and ask it to solve using linsolve or the backslash operator, MATLAB will give you the best approximate solution that it can give using a, uh, an algorithm called the least squares solution algorithm. Uh, that's beyond the scope of uh, this course, but it is a way of approximating a solution where it cannot be figured out exactly. So, but the thing is, you don't see that on the screen. It just gives you a solution. So it's always helpful to go back and check to make sure whether your answer is an exact solution or an approximate one. That's about all we have time for right now. Just a quick overview of how to set up systems in MATLAB and solve them using linsolve and the backslash operator. Thank you for watching.